uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. Well, uh, first of all, I hope that you are all well and uh, your loved ones uh, equally well and that you're keeping safe and sound uh, in this terrible time. Um, so, look, I uh, would like to say a few remarks, make a few remarks about our results as an organisation in 2019. You have the press releases, I think, so I shall be relatively brief there. Uh, and then I will say a little bit about 2020 and, um, and uh, some words about the crisis and its uh, potential impact on this organisation, focusing on that. And then, of course, you're free to ask whatever you uh, wish. Uh, now, uh, of course, in 2019 was the year that was. Uh, and we're all very conscious that we're in a completely different environment now in 2020, completely different circumstances with a massive catastrophe occurring throughout the world. Uh, and what I'm going to report are some stellar results for the year 2019. So it's a little bit um, awkward, really, to be communicating such uh, outstanding results, really, for the organisation in this context of widespread suffering and uh, misery that is occurring as a, a consequence of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, but as far as WIPO is concerned and 2019, uh, let me say that uh, what we see generally uh, in respect of intellectual property uh, in the course of 2019 corresponds very much with the trends that we have discussed together for uh, quite a number of years now. <clears throat> Notably, high demand for intellectual property, innovation at the forefront of uh, economic activity and economic strategy, um, uh, record levels of demand, which uh, translate into our systems as well, uh, new players entering, Asia rising, and China in particular uh, driving the general rise of Asia as a new player, um, relatively new player in the global IP and innovation landscape. Uh, for us, all of that translated into uh, a record year in quite a number of ways. A record number uh, in, of applications in all of our systems. So as you know, PCT growing by 5.2% to 265,000 odd applications. Uh, tra international trademark applications under the Madrid system growing by 5.7% to 64,000 odd applications and international design applications under the Hague system growing by 8% uh, 8 to reach uh, nearly 6,000 applications, international applications. At the same time, the intensity of competition has translated into uh, an increased number of disputes with, uh, between private parties that are managed by the WIPO Arbitration and Mediation Centre. So uh, again, a record number of domain name uh, disputes um, 3,700 just about uh, internet domain name disputes, over 60 arbitrations and mediations generally uh, speaking outside the internet domain name area and uh, very uh, active involvement on a part of all of our member states and engagement in the field of intellectual property which we could see through a record number of accessions to the 26 multilateral treaties that we administer namely 55 um, accessions. The treaty that's moving the most is the Marrakesh Treaty um, with uh, 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 nearly 100 countries, over 90 countries covered by the Marrakesh Treaty and we hope to get to universality on that. So that is, as I said, the, the year that was in a nutshell, perhaps I, I omit one very important um, in and that is the financial performance of the organisation. As a consequence of this demand and our management of the demand, uh, the organisation recorded a record uh, surplus of 97.5 million Swiss francs. Now, included in that is an investment gain of 42 million Swiss francs. That investment gain represents the, the gain on the investments that we have of our uh, uh, covering our reserves, and it can easily go the other way. 
as you are very much aware. Uh, nevertheless, even discounting the investment game, it's an over 50 million uh, surplus on our operations. Uh, so 97.5 in all. Now moving to uh, 2020, well, um, first of all, the operations of the organization. We have transited like everyone else <coughs> over the course, well, starting uh, over three weeks ago now, uh, to becoming a, a virtual organization. We have a very small emergency staff uh, on uh, campus um, dealing with security buildings, this uh, uh, medical services and so forth. Uh, but all uh, of our employees, apart from the small emergency equip uh, uh, team, are uh, located in uh, in their houses and uh, are working remotely. Now, uh, the transition has gone reasonably well for us, and probably for two reasons. First of all, uh, most of our services or all of our services are delivered on electronic platforms. Uh, so uh, we already had become to some extent a virtual organization. So the transition was relatively smooth in this regard. And secondly, we have used flexible employment arrangements and, and uh, open innovation um, inspired uh, use of outside resources to a quite a large extent, particularly, for example, in the areas of translation or in the area of IT development. Uh, and that all has taken place in any case remotely. Uh, so uh, that too has facilitated our uh, transition. Uh, so I would say uh, we are operating at well over 90% of our ordinary capacity um, and we will get to 100% if we haven't got there uh, yet, we'll get there extremely soon. So that is good. What is something? Well, first, meetings. There are no meetings. And meetings, of course, are the stock in trade for the development of uh, the international normative framework ruling at the multilateral level. Uh, and this is not taking place. Uh, so that's one casualty, if you like, in our operations. Uh, and the second is I'm concerned about our capacity to deliver development services uh, in this environment, because a lot of those rely on physical presence in the countries uh, and travel. Um, we are nevertheless fortunate that we have a number of platforms, I could go into the details, which serve developing countries. We provide the operating system for uh, 80 countries, uh, intellectual property offices that can all continue and the maintenance work continues as usual. We have over 700 technology and innovation support centres that are operational and operational on a basis of of a, a virtual network. So there are a lot of, there is a lot of development work that is nevertheless taking place. But we are concerned uh, that uh, the physical presence will have an impact uh, on this. Now, uh, let me go then away from uh, our operations, which I think are okay, um, and uh, say a word about the impact that this crisis will have on innovation and intellectual property. Now, this is a huge subject, and, and um, my remarks are very uh, superficial in, in a certain uh, uh, respect, because we are, uh, I think, still observing, we're still in early days. What we know is that the impact will be huge. It will be uh, extremely significant. But we don't really know at this stage just how deep uh, the economic crisis uh, is or will be, and for how long it will last. And those are two very important parameters in making an evaluation of the impact of this crisis on innovation. The creative industries, let's not forget, uh, many of those uh, actors in the industries are involved in the gig economy, if you think of musicians and performers. Uh, so it is going to have a very widespread and significant uh, impact. In our own operations, uh, and that's only a small part of the world, let's remember, um, in our own operations, I would say that um, uh, we have not yet seen the impact. Now, uh, if this were to be a classical 
uh, recession, economic recession, um, which it is not. If it were to be, we would expect that probably there would be an impact um, almost immediately on our trademark uh, operations because trademarks are brands, they represent new products, new services, and new enterprises. Uh, and the economic disruption obviously is having a huge impact here. Uh, then in the pattern area, the technology area, because of the way our systems work, we would expect the major part of the impact to be in 2021 because uh, we receive as international ap applications, applications that have been filed in 12 months ago in 2020. Um, so uh, we would expect that. Now that's classical situation, what we might expect. And of course, we're in a different situation here. Um, and uh, so I say once again, I'm sorry to repeat myself, we don't yet know how deep uh, and how long this crisis uh, is going to be. But it's going to be extremely significant across all of the creative industries. Of course, there are many virtual platforms out there, but think of journalists, think of writers, think of musical performers, think of actors, think of the coming together that is required to make a film so the impact on the creative industries is going to be extremely significant. The impact on innovation is going to be extremely significant. The impact on global value chains is, is already extremely significant. We can't evaluate that at this stage. Um, and perhaps I'll just leave my uh, observations at that point. I realise that uh, I've given you no answers, but I'm afraid we're too early uh, to be coming up with uh, answers about this. Um, and I'll stop my remarks of already too long. Uh, I thank you all for having been present or being present this morning, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, guys, uh, anybody have any questions, please? Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Juliette. Okay. Yes, Juliette from UK. Please, go ahead. Good morning. Uh, can you give us a little bit more insight? Why did China's patent application increase so much? Would it be probably maybe to the due to the help of state subsidies in terms of uh, you know, you know pushing innovation and creativity? And also, do you think this? <clears throat> sorry, do you think this strong Chinese trend will continue for a while? And then I'll have another question related with Jap for Japan. Certainly. So look, uh, we have talked about China um, uh, in the past quite a lot. Um, I would put it down to a very um, deliberate strategy on the part of the Thai Chinese leadership to uh, advance uh, innovation and to make the country uh, a country that, uh, op whose economy operates at a higher level of value. Uh, so, uh, of course, China for a uh, long time has been the factory of the world and it's been uh, manufacturing and relying on um, really, to some extent, low cost manufacturing. But we've seen that change in recent years and we've seen a deliberate strategy on the part of the uh, Chinese leadership to promote innovation and to promote the high-end, high-value uh, industries. Uh, and um, it's a very clear strategy uh, and it is paying dividends. It is working. This is an intellectual property is certainly part of it, uh, of that strategy. So it's working. So I would put it down to that broad movement towards um, becoming a higher-value um, uh, economy, um, and we will see, if, and we have seen, that certain areas of low-cost manufacturing, uh, low-cost labour manufacturing, will move to other countries such as Vietnam, Philippines, and so on uh, around the world. But um, here we see the strategy in manufacturing, uh, the, the strategy uh, in research and development, uh, in all areas being to promote high technology uh, on the part of China. And I think what we see 
in terms of intellectual property applications is, an, is a consequence of that uh, strategy. Uh, you had a follow-up, Juliette? Yes, sorry. Um, yes, uh, I was wondering if the Chinese strategy was also helped with the other state subsidies mm -hmm. to develop this. Um, yeah, look, I think, it's a, yeah, I think it's a general um, uh, uh, question of, of the organization of the economy and political economy. Uh, and of course, the, the Chinese model is different from the model that you might find in certain Western countries. Um, it's, a, it's an innovation system which is promoted by uh, the state. If you compare it, for example, to the United States, you know, uh, one uh, commentator in the National Academies has said the United States doesn't really have an innovation system, uh, but it has uh, in the same sense because it's not a top down driven system, but it has wonderful institutions, high performing corporations, uh, uh, very much a bipartisan policy of promoting science and technology, but it's a different way of going about things. In the case of China, of course, it is, um, it, it is a, a, a state-based um, uh, 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 social, socialist market economy. It's a different model. Um, and uh, the intervention on the part of the leadership and the lead given and the guidance given on the part of the leadership are entirely different. Uh, it's a model which does use state subsidies to a greater extent perhaps than uh, Western economies might typically use state subsidies. Um, and uh, so, yes, it certainly plays a role. But I think it's very interesting to compare you know, the United States of America is one example of a high performing, you know, it's been top of innovation for a long time, uh, economy, a completely different model and what's happening in China. <clears throat> well, the jury is still out. We will see in, uh, you know, or well, perhaps we won't see, but our, uh, uh, our, our, um, our descendants will see uh, which one is successful and perhaps both are successful with two different models. So uh, I wouldn't make any radical judgments that one is better than the other. Uh, they're both working. Uh, yes, I do. I've got a follow-up, sorry, <clears throat> for Japan now. Go ahead, Juliet. Yeah, so um, Japan is third, but its presence is lower than the US and China. Do you have any tips So how can Japan revitalize itself in the field of intellectual property? Oh. Look, I think Japan is a high performer in, in innovation. It's a very high-tech economy. Um, I, I personally, in my visits there, I'm constantly impressed by uh, the extent to which the, the uh, companies are focused on uh, technology and innovation and the extent to which the government is focused on it. Uh, and um, so... I would not have too many worries about Japan. I think what we've seen in recent years uh, in respect of Japan is that they've slightly changed their intellectual property strategy. Uh, so consequence we've seen a, a tended to see a, a relative decline in the number of domestic applications, but reasonably healthy increases in the number of international applications. So they have moved, if you like, to internationalizing to a greater extent their uh, science and technology. Um, of course, then you, make a, uh, you might make a, a comment about the economy in general and stagnation and, and so on. That's beyond my uh, expertise to give you uh, precise answers in that. I think it's got something to do with demography and decline in, in population. Um, it's got something to do with increased, uh, uh, in the increased intensity of competition. This is really the battleground for competition uh, uh, that we see in the economy or has been the battleground for uh, uh, competition in the economy for the last decade at least. Um, what emerges from the current circumstances may be different, may, may not be different. Thank you. Um, I don't see any hands raised virtually, but would anybody like to ask any more questions?
okay? Well, thank you all for- Wait a second, sorry. Sorry, um, Steph, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Hi, um, sorry. Um, hello, Francis and uh, Samar and everybody. Hi, hi. Um, I, I just wondered whether, I know it's early days, we're just April, but do you see any, um, any preliminary data at all in the first quarter, let's say, um, any, any trends that you're able to identify? Uh, China has been actually you know, pretty well shut down for three months now. Do you have any preliminary um, data in terms of, you know, pat uh, patents, yeah. trademarks, etc.? Yeah. I know I know there's a lag, but I just wonder. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, uh, Stephanie. Yes, it's it's a great question, of course. Uh, look, um, at the moment, I can't answer uh, that um, to say that we do have those indications. We expect that, uh, but we don't yet have it. I think this thing is unfolding at such a rapid rate that you know, a mere month makes a huge difference. If you compare where we were one month ago, we were more or less, you know, with the exception of some of the Asian countries, carrying on as we usually do. So it's all happened in the course of the last month, really, uh, in extraordinarily you know, short period of time uh, for it to become a global phenomenon of closed, of uh, shutdown. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, at the international level, we tend to have this time lag for uh, technology because, uh, uh, you know, it reflects decisions that have been taken to patent at the national level um, uh, one year ago. Uh, so we don't yet see any indications, but that's on the basis of preliminary underlined data for the months of January, February and March. And it's very preliminary because we rely on the countries giving us the data. Uh, and some of them are behind. Uh, but the, what the preliminary data for January, February and March would indicate is, um, I'd say reasonably flat, not you know um, the same growth levels as previously, but not yet at the declines. I would not attach any significance to that, you know. Um, uh, what we are in the process of trying to do is to get uh, the, let's say, the 15 uh, uh, highest volume officers to transmit to us data uh, on a monthly basis, which will give us a better picture of what's happening on the ground. Um, so it's probably going to be a couple of months before we have a picture of the impact of this on intellectual property activity and technology. Um, and uh, statistically, uh, uh, for us to be able to say anything that makes any sense whatsoever, um, because it's just so rapid and, um, and because we are uh, actually only about one month into the global, uh, as it were, uh, shutdown. But um, look, we can all imagine impacts um, there must be impacts. Now, to some extent, development is a more virtual activity than manufacturing. Uh, so um, it, it may be that it is not impacted to quite the same extent. On the other hand, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, innovation is coming out of startups. There's a liquidity crisis for startups. Um, the the uh, capital is not available. The risk appetite is not the same. Uh, and that is going to have uh, certainly an impact. So I think we can identify a number of factors that uh, we would expect would be extremely influential um, in pointing in a rather negative direction. But um, as yet, to say something factual, I'm afraid um, I, we don't have the data. Thank you. Nick, uh, go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Um, we're going to see a lot of pressure um, for access to um, the new drugs that Big Pharma is developing to tackle this. We've seen one country issuing uh, 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 a sort of a compulsory uh, order to access one drug. I'm wondering, do you see any risk of um, serious conflict sort of growing in, around this issue? And do you think that the, the battle for access to these kind of drug technologies may have implications for the wider integrity of the intellectual property market to patent market. 
<coughs> well, uh, Nick, thank you very much for the question. Thank you for raising this. Um, this is a hot issue, and it's and it's a very sensitive issue as well. Uh, but I would say that um, the starting point should be that we're in a profound crisis which is causing widespread human misery and suffering. And I think there is a, a, a pretty unanimous approach on the part of the countries of the world to reduce to the extent possible the suffering and misery that is occurring. It's an extraordinary situation and extraordinary situations call for extraordinary measures. Uh, the international legal framework uh, does foresee uh, a, a certain number of flexibilities for countries to be able to deal with health in particular uh, and health emergencies. Uh, and the practice, as you've uh, pointed out, uh, is emerging for countries to take advantage of those flexibilities. Uh, and we can see that they are intervening, the degree of intervention uh, on the part of countries in the economy, for example, requisitioning manufacturing capacity. Uh, the degree of intervention is unprecedented except in wartime. So I think we have to all recognize that that's the situation that we are in. Uh, now, uh, that said, um, uh, I will address this in, in a communication uh, towards the end of this week, I hope. Uh, a more general communication. So I'll say it's still in work in progress and I'll say more about it uh, at that stage. Uh, but look, it's a, it's a very complex question. Obviously, recognize the primacy of health and safety. Uh, and that's our starting point. Uh, and it should be our starting point. And I think that trumps everything uh, in the current circumstances and the current stage of the evolution of this crisis. Then I think that uh, one would hope that the actions taken by countries are targeted, that they deal with real situations and real needs and real shortages. This is not a theoretical discussion. This is a discussion about a crisis and action that needs to be taken. Uh, and I hope that that, uh, that those actions are, and so far I think that's what we're seeing, uh, are targeted actions to alleviate suffering and misery and to get treatments uh, to the people uh, that need them. Um, and I hope, therefore, that it's not just a general uh, blah, blah about, um, you know, um, the intellectual property system. Uh, we're in a real crisis and it needs action oriented, uh, I think, um, policy measures. Now, that said, we also have to think that the policy measures are going to have an impact uh, and uh, we have to wait and see what they are. This is where some real thought needs to be given to this. If they're targeted, uh, such as the compulsory license that you mentioned, it's a very specific compulsory license on a very specific product uh, to ensure the supply of that product in the market. Uh, that's uh, arguably the sort of action that we uh, need. We have to remember that we have developed an economy which is dependent on uh, technology and is dependent on innovation. Uh, and we've developed also a society which is which is dependent more or less um, on, you know, the widespread available of uh, availability of cultural uh, products through electronic platforms and, and others. Um, and uh, we have to, I think, in ensure as a secondary consideration, the primacy is always health and safety, uh, but as a secondary consideration, that the sort of actions we take um, are not just actions that derogate, but also actions that look to, for example, in the creative industries, the position of all of the musical performers and other actors and other, other people who are unemployed uh, at the moment or who can't find their no concerts on. You know, um, there are um, 
you know, I doubt that there's very much film production, uh, except in very limited circumstances. So um, these are uh, real situations where uh, we would like to see, you know, governments paying attention in their remediation packages, also to the plight of our creators. Uh, and I would include in that category, not just the creative industries, but also our startups. The many, many startups that are out there suddenly find that capital and venture capital and risk capital is drying up. Uh, they've got good ideas, which can make a big difference, even for this crisis. Uh, and we have to ensure that there's some level of uh, innovation activity can still take place. So I think a very complex situation we have to, I think, put our collective heads together on this one uh, and um, <clears throat> look at it in a non-ideological manner, in a pragmatic manner, and get the uh, measures that need to be taken uh, out there to ensure access uh, where there is a, a demonstrated unavailability of uh, medical supplies or uh, medicines, uh, but at the same time, we have to bear in mind that a secondary consideration is the economic disruption that is occurring and the human suffering and misery that is occurring as a consequence of the disruption. The unemployed, the people who are not being able to survive in, in uh, the circumstances and ensure that the measures we take in are time bound to the emergency, targeted, and bear in mind that we need some positive action to uh, keep innovation and creative industries going. Whether that translates into a completely different system, I doubt it. I think we're in a crisis and we will emerge from the crisis. Who knows when, but we will emerge. And um, uh, I, I would hope that our innovation system and our creative industries are big survivors. Uh, Nick, ha Nick has a follow-up, and then I see Catherine would like to uh, ask a question. Go ahead, Nick. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, if I could just follow up and say, uh, do you envisage then that WIPO, either itself or in conjunction with other UN agencies, will seek to introduce some special mechanism to facilitate sharing of technologies and, 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 and drug patents and that sort of thing to, to get through this particular crisis? Well, uh, I think there's a lot of discussion that's uh, going on at this stage. Look, I think we have to recognise one thing, that amongst the casualties of disruption uh, is, in a certain sense, uh, the, the methods that we use to achieve multilateral agreement. And the principal method that we uh, used in the past to achieve multilateral agreement was a meeting. Uh, and an inclusive meeting with full membership. Now that's being challenged because of just the circumstances in which we're living. Uh, and so the possibility of seeing action taken in the sort of form that we once might have taken action multilaterally, namely countries coming together, negotiating and agreeing a solution which can then be uh, applied well, I'm not sure that that will uh, be able to take place quite as easily, uh, ensuring inclusivity. And we must remember that, you know, we are multilateral institutions, so uh, we can't just negotiate with uh, five or six or 10 even or 15 or 20. We have to try to hear the needs uh, and concerns of the whole world. So, this is a challenge uh, and we're right in the middle of it. Um, that said, um, we can't sit there and do nothing. Uh, and so there are discussions going on um, and uh, you've pointed to uh, a non sort of legislative mechanism that is a practical system uh, uh, and practical operation. And I think that's a, a great, if I may say, uh, a great way forward. Uh, is let's look at the practical measures that can make uh, a difference here. And of course, we are involved in discussions with various parties to see, um, you know, what might be done in this regard. Uh, Catherine? Oui, bonjour. Catherine. Hi, Francis. Bonjour. 
Hope you're doing okay. fine. Je vais vous demander quelques mots en français, s'il vous plaît, en particulier euh, sur la crise, euh, l'impact de la crise COVID-19 sur l'aspect purement culturel, production culturelle, comme vous, oui. vous l'avez la, évoqué, tout ce qui est après au journalisme, à la, euh, au monde cinématographique et, et autres. Merci beaucoup d'avance. Merci Catherine. Uh, oui, tout à fait. Uh, je pense que uh, il faut qu'on soit conscient uh, de, de l'impact que cette crise uh, a sur les industries cré créatives et notamment tous les uh, artistes exécutants, uh, que ce soit des auteurs, des journalistes par exemple, uh, uh, que uh, des écrivains. Uh, que ce soit uh, des, des artistes exécutants, et exécutants uh, de la musique, uh, musical performers, um, des acteurs, ils souffrent. Uh, et c'est parce que c'est uh, uh, aussi un secteur qui n'est pas aussi formalisé que d'autres secteurs. Uh, et on sait bien que le gig economy souffre en premier lieu. Euh, et euh, je pense que, j'espère que, parmi les actions entreprises par les gouvernements, euh, seront euh, des mesures euh, pour euh, s'adresser à la situation de tous les créateurs et les artistes exécutants euh, sur qui on détend euh, euh, et qui sont une source de d'énormes de, de, euh, richesses euh, de notre société. Donc, euh, je pense que l'impact est sévère, d'abord, euh, que c'est une question que euh, les gouvernements qui ont l'espace fiscal devraient inclure dans leurs actions pour assurer qu'on euh, ne voit pas disparaître les industries créatives euh, avec cette crise. Merci beaucoup. Euh, Est-ce que je peux un follow-up sur euh, autre chose Bien, Bien sûr. sûr. Merci, euh, Samar. Bonjour, Samar. Je ne t'ai pas dit bonjour. Salut, euh, je voulais également avoir votre avis. En ces périodes généralement troubles, euh, beaucoup de, de personnes euh, immorales profitent justement euh, pour euh, détourner, euh, que ce soit des inventions ou des créations. Euh, et justement, comme on sait que euh, les gens ne peuvent pas enregistrer de manière normale, ne peuvent pas sortir, est-ce que vous avez déjà euh, quelques indications que, euh, justement, il y a euh, de, des formes, euh, on va dire, de, euh, immorales de détournement de propriété intellectuelle euh, en ce moment ou est-ce que c'est quelque pas... chose que vous craignez Oui, oui. Euh, le dernier, oui. En Ukraine, euh, on n'a pas des, des données euh, spécifiques. Mais euh, ce qu'on sait en général, c'est que le niveau de cybercriminalité augmente. Euh, il y a des gens qui profitent de, euh, de la nouvelle situation où presque tout le monde est en ligne et presque tout le monde euh, font la transaction euh, en ligne. Euh, donc, ça, c'est un, un grand de, euh, souci pour tout le monde. Euh, L'augmentation de la cybercriminalité. Bien sûr, partie de la cybercriminalité et euh, toutes les activités de la concurrence déloyale, euh, c'est-à-dire l'espionnage, etc. Euh, et euh, ce secteur et je pense, je, je pense surtout des start-up et des créateurs et particulièrement exposés. Donc, c'est une crainte. On n'a pas de données spécifiques pour le dire, mais il faut que tout le monde fasse attention ici et assure qu'on continue avec une concurrence loyale dans les nouvelles circonstances. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci Catherine. Uh, do we have any more questions? Okay, well, 
Thank you very, very much for joining. Um, please, everybody, take good care. Thank you, Director General, also. Thanks, and Emma. Thanks we'll... to everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry about the circumstances. And keep well. <laughs>